Hello, this is Zahil Alum. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. My guest today is Chairman and President of Export-Import Bank of United States of America, Mr. Fred P. Hawkbarg. He is now in Dhaka to engage in discussions with the government of Bangladesh officials and business leaders intended to expand commercial relations with the United States, between the United States and Bangladesh. Over the last few years, Chairman Hawkbarg has worked to increase the global presence of U.S. experts to fields such as renewable energy, construction, satellites, telecommunications, and aircraft, and so on. We welcome Chairman Hogbug on Frankly Speaking. Welcome, Mr. Thank Hogbug on Frankly Thank Speaking. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's an honor uh, uh, that uh, you are joining me on Frankly Speaking. Uh, I guess this is your first visit in Bangladesh. Yes. And what prompted you to visit and pick Bangladesh first? I've been wanting to come to Bangladesh for many years. Um, Export-Import Bank of the United States, it's the official trade bank of the United States, has had a long history here. Most recently with Biman Airlines okay. and a number of the new aircraft that they're flying around the world, uh, 777s, 737s that uh, transport people to and from Dhaka. Many people who work and so forth around the world are able to come home to Dhaka that way. So uh, from that work, I wanted to so come and see it for myself, meet with the management. Uh, also working with other U.S. companies that are anxious to do business here. Uh, renewable energy, as you mentioned, uh, power, logistics. So there's a lot of opportunity here. This is a fast-growing economy, and I wanted to see for it myself and see how U.S. Can, United States companies can participate more broadly. Uh, we heard that you have already met some of the important uh, government officials, and you are about to meet some of the business uh, leaders, economic leaders in Bangladesh. So what do you have already discussed with the uh, government uh, officials in Bangladesh? Well, we've already discussed, one, just the, the enormous opportunity here. Power is an important thing. If we want this economy to keep growing, it's growing at 6.5%, 7%. It's a strong economic growth, the envy of many countries in the world. But to do that and sustain that, you need good power. And that will make sure that the manufacturing maintains its edge and that you can deliver more jobs for the people. So that's what we've talked about. There's a, uh, the Prime Minister is very focused on renewable energy, uh, solar, wind, uh, gas-fired power. So there is enormous energy opportunities here. That's one of the things we talked about. We talked about transportation, talked about the general economy in, in, in general, how it's doing, why this is growing so fast, and how we maintain that growth. What, I mean, why you are uh, putting forward so much important to Bangladesh? Well, it's a, it's a fast-growing economy. It has uh, enormous appetite and desire to add more infrastructure. And that's exactly what the United States excels at. We excel at selling the best and most innovative technology, be it transportation, be it solar power, be it uh, gas-powered uh, uh, power plants. So this is a place where we can do a lot of business. We can grow together, and I think that countries that build things together, that make things together, form even deeper ties. But what kind of, but what degree of reciprocations you're receiving from the Bangladesh end? Well, I think that if we look at Biman Airlines as one example, uh, they have bought a lot of Boeing aircraft, uh, employing a lot of people in America, but there are a lot of very good jobs here. Those airplanes will fly for 25 or more years. That will be pilots, flight attendants, uh, luggage, uh, baggage carriers, uh, reservation people, and bring in tourist dollars and a lot of others. So there's a lot of jobs, good paying jobs, um, family supporting jobs that are supported by these kind of investments. You have already uh, invested from uh, Export Import Bank of the United States of America uh, at least $500 million. Yes, it's actually closer to about 650 already, and uh, we have more on the way. There are a number more aircraft. BMOM is continuing to grow, and uh, we are looking forward to partnering with them as they grow so that they can buy the modern aircraft, upgrade their fleet, okay. provide top-notch service, and also low-cost fares. So what kind of, I mean, uh, response you did have from the Biman Bangladesh? Well, Biman, we're going to be talking more tomorrow, so uh, we're going to be doing that as well. Um, but up to now, they, they are very enthusiastic, um, made a big move forward a few years ago as they began to modernize their fleet, becomes more fuel efficient, which is important today, and provides faster service and, as I said, again, lower cost because you get more people on an airplane more efficiently. 
uh, I know that this is your first visit in Bangladesh, but what sense you have after, uh, after coming over to Bangladesh uh, about the investment climate in, in this country? Well, I think it's a very vibrant community, a very vibrant country, a large population, uh, a strong democratic uh, tradition. And, but let's be honest, in desperate need of more infrastructure, in desperate need of a better road system, uh, airplane, uh, jet transportation. So the opportunities are there. And we, I've seen in many countries, uh, President Obama appointed me to this job almost seven years ago. And if you can get the infrastructure right and you can get the power right, a lot of other things will fall into place. But you need those two things first. You need power, reliable power that's low cost, that you can do manufacturing, and you need the logistics to bring goods to market and bring people in. So once you get those two in place, there already is a, an, an emphasis on education here, an emphasis on a good work ethic, an emphasis on entrepreneurship. So those other infrastructure things can really take this economy and keep growing at the rate it's been growing. We are looking at to improve the uh, 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 renewable energy power. So uh, what are the areas uh, United States, uh, particularly Exim Bank of US, can uh, extend their support? Well, um, solar power is something that the Prime Minister, I know, is, is very focused on. Uh, we have great expertise in solar power. We have a number of companies that sell solar power. We, we were the largest financier in 2011 in India for their national solar mission. No other bank, no other bank or, or export credit agency so the Export-Import Bank of the United States provided more financing in India in 2011 than any other source. I was just there to see how we can do more of that. Prime Minister Modi has talked about increasing up to 60 gigawatts. That's a lot of power of yeah. solar. Um, here we're talking about two gigawatts to get started, but it's a start. And that's why I'm here, because I think what you need to do is not just look at acquisition costs, but say, what is the power we're going to get out of this solar uh, facility and for how many years and so look at amortizing it. What we do at the Export Input Bank, we will be able to provide 18 years of financing, so a very long-term loan, very hard to find in the commercial banks, and as a result we can make a solar power very affordable. How comfortable did the U.S. Uh, investors uh, in Bangladesh uh, find them to compete with the with the available opportunities in Bangladesh and seize opportunities in Bangladesh? Well, it's a very competitive world out there. And I know that China is very active, uh, Korea, uh, Japan. So what we do at the Export-Import Bank of the United States is make sure that U.S. companies have the financial tools to compete on a level playing field so that the people in Bangladesh, the government, and the private sector chooses the best solution and we will make sure that the financing is there to keep it a level playing field with our foreign competitors. We'll discuss more about the opportunities in Bangladesh and the role of Exim Bank of the United States of America. Mr. Hogberg, uh, since President Obama took office, Exim Bank has supported over 650 million in U.S. exports to Bangladesh. So in the coming years, I mean, it was more than under any previous administration. So it's very encouraging. So um, what are you looking at in, for the coming years? Well, in the coming years, I think that the investments that I see being considered here, uh, as I, we talked power, renewable power, uh, infrastructure, the airport, there are so many opportunities. So I, let's think of the $650 million, as you mentioned, more than any other administration has ever invested here. But let's see, see, look at that as a down payment. Let's look at that as a start, not a finish. So I'm here to say, let's, let's build on that good, strong, beginning. Uh, frequently in many countries, uh, when aircraft is purchased from Boeing, it opens up the market. And so I'm hoping we could open up the market. I know that companies such as General Electric and Caterpillar and then many others, and in many small businesses too, have a great interest in doing this. It might sound hypothetical, but over the uh, last few years, say for example, the Obama administration is taking over $650 million uh, the U.S. exposed to Bangladesh. So, I mean, uh, in the coming years, could you give a sense that uh, where we, we can go in terms of figure? Well, hard to know that. You know, what we hope to do at the Export-Import Bank is we really want to bring the private sector in. So we're there if a private bank won't do the lending. So hopefully what really happens is we can lead the way that other banks, private sector banks, without needing a, a government guarantee, we'll start making more loans. So that's what we really, that would be the best outcome. 
because others will see the enormous opportunities here in Bangladesh. So we haven't set a real specific target because what we want to do is bring in other banks, bring in other players, and make the pot a lot larger. We know that Bangladesh government actively seeks some uh, foreign direct investment, particularly in the uh, energy power infrastructure sector, of which you also are putting forward your emphasis. So it offers a range of uh, investment opportunity, uh, I mean incentives as well. So are you uh, convinced with the opportunities, with the incentives they are providing for the foreign uh, exporters or the investors, potential investors? Well, what we do at the Export Input Bank is a little different from some of the other probably multilateral banks that you're working with. And what we do is we finance U.S. exports. We don't really finance investment here. We have another agency in Washington called the Overseas Private Investment Corporation. A very good friend of mine, Elizabeth Littlefield, runs that. And they are involved with the U.S. companies that want to invest here in Bangladesh. Our role is supporting U.S. exports to Bangladesh. Okay. So, um, I mean, uh, Bangladesh, you mentioned about that the, you're encouraged with the growing nature of economy and the rising consumers' demand. So, uh, I mean, as a uh, Bangladesh is looking at to become a middle-income country by 2021. So by encouraging or welcoming uh, U.S. exporters to Bangladesh, will how that be conducive for Bangladesh's interest and in, uh, economy? Well, I think that when you, again, when we build a power plant, there are a lot of construction jobs that are created, and then there are jobs in running it. So I think the one way to become a middle-income country is that there'll be better, more and better high-paying jobs, more jobs in the formal economy, less jobs in the informal economy. So I think that the way to move into a middle-income country is to have more jobs in that area. I mean, Bangladesh has enormous expertise in ready-made garments, uh, and there are a number of other areas that are a real great sense of strength in this economy. And I think what I'm hoping is that we can provide some of the tools, power, tools of manufacturing that Bangladesh can keep growing and moving up the value chain. How optimistic you are about your I mean, uh, visit will uh, produce and uh, you will see a very good and productive results. I have, uh, I've seen nothing but enthusiasm. First of all, the, the soul of the people I've met in Bangladesh is very strong, very warm, yep. and very focused, and very fair. And, and a very tolerant culture. And I think those are the things, when you look globally, that will make a large difference. Also, let's remember, the English language is a, la is a global language. It is very is spoken f frequently here by many, many people. All my meetings were in English. That really helps the Bangladesh connect with the rest of the world in a very strong and profound way. Give uh, some impression about the, I mean, greater impression about the Export Import Bank of the United States of America. We heard that you have, uh, I mean, the your mandate, uh, which has been renewed last year, and your slogan is to reducing uh, risk and unleashing opportunity. Uh, what it does stands for. What does that mean? Well, we reduce, what we do at the Export Import, we reduce risk. Many people in our country are often afraid of exporting. They don't, what if I don't get paid? I don't know what the customs are. I don't know duty. I don't know the practices. So what we do is we can reduce the risk. We can provide guarantees. I often say, particularly to our small business exporters, we're in the sleep business. We let you get a good night's sleep. You're not going to worry whether you're going to get paid by your overseas customer. So we are trying to reduce risk. And as a result, unleash opportunity. You know, 95% of the world's population lives outside the United States. So if you want to grow your business today, you need to be looking at the 95% of the people who live outside the U.S., not only the people there. So we want to unleash opportunity, but do it in a way that manages the risk. So as a business person, an entrepreneur has the confidence to do that. One of the other things I'm hoping we can do from this visit is we have a large Bangladesh population in the United States. And I would like us to be able to tap into those entrepreneurs in America from Bangladesh who would like to export goods and services back home because they understand the American markets and they also have a good understanding of the market here. And I think that's a unique opportunity that can come out of this visit. Did you, uh, have you been able to encourage them significantly? I'm hoping that this trip will actually kick that off. And we have done that in a number of other communities, and I'd like to do that in the Bangladesh. What are the resources you're providing for them? Well, we provide, we, we provide, we can provide working capital loans. So if you need 
to borrow money so that you can buy the inventory and prepare goods for shipment. We can provide a, your bank with a 90% guarantee. We also provide what's called export credit insurance. So a U.S. person sells goods in, in Bangladesh. Instead of paying immediately, you can pay in, say, 60, 90, 120 days. So it gives time for the goods to come to Bangladesh, perhaps even be sold before the company in Bangladesh has to pay the United States. Their, their shipper in the United States. That provides a lot of leverage. It provides liquidity for the company here and provides peace of mind for the export. Mr. Hogberg, uh, after renewing the charter of your bank, what are the objectives you have set so far to achieve in the coming years? Well, my primary objective is why I'm here in Bangladesh, is to make sure that companies in Bangladesh and the rest of the world realize we're back in business, we're here to support U.S. exports, here to support exports of infrastructure and renewable energy, and to make that message very clear. So this trip, Bangladesh was one of my first stops, but also includes Singapore and India. So I want, and we'll be traveling both the United States and around the world to make sure people know we're back in business, we stand behind American workers and American companies as they want to export overseas. Uh, I want to shed some light of some of your uh, previous roles. Uh, you work for uh, Finca, FINCA International Mike for Microfinance. So, uh, how microfinance impact the economy and employment across the world, especially? Well, you know, the whole microfinance um, the miracle started right here in Bangladesh. You know, with Grameen Bank is really the beginning of microfinance as a tool. And microfinance has made sure that women are empowered, particularly women. I remember when I was at Finca, something like 90, 95% of our customers were women. And the small loans they got were able to make sure they could provide for their family, but importantly, get their children to go to school, pay for school, and not force their children to go to work before they had an education. So the microfinance that I did with Finca, uh, and as I said, was really pioneered here in Bangladesh, has had enormous impact on changing the lives, particularly of women around the world and their children. You also worked for uh, as a co-chair of the Human Rights Campaign in the United States of America. Uh, it's a very critical issue for many countries, including Bangladesh. Yes, and the Human Rights Campaign is the largest uh, gay and lesbian organization in the United States that's been advocating for fair treatment and equal treatment. Uh, President Obama has been an enormous champion of uh, fairness and equality for L LGBT people, from marriage equality to uh, laws against hate crimes, uh, to make sure that companies that do business with the federal government have non-discrimination policies. Uh, our military now lets le lesbian and gay people serve. So uh, that's been very rewarding work for me. I've done it uh, for many, many years. I was co-chair of the organization, as you mentioned, and I'm still uh, actively involved. In fact, I'm having, uh, when I return to the States, I'm going to be meeting with the new president, with the current president of the Human Rights Campaign. So very frankly, that uh, a political stability, political certainty is very critical uh, to expand to what you intended for. I mean, uh, better commercial relations or uh, economic relations between two parties. So how do you find the overall uh, I mean, political situation in Bangladesh? Well, I think very strong, a, good dem a very good democratic tradition. Um, I, all the ministers I met were focused, keenly focused on doing the right thing for the country. And as I've, I've often felt that if we make things together, we build an airline, build a power system, build infrastructure together, the more we do together, we really become partners over time. And that makes for a very durable friendship, a far deeper friendship than if it's purely strategic or military. So I think that that's very strong in our favor between the United States and Bangladesh. Plus, so many people from Bangladesh live in the United States uh, gives us another anchor for a much deeper and richer friendship. Are you impressed with the degree of commitment you find uh, with the government leaders, uh, policymakers about the projects uh, you are looking at, about power and energy, aircraft, satellites, telecommunications, so on? I'm very proud of the fact that, that there is a real desire to do business with American companies. You know, American companies want to do business there, here, and the officials I've met all want to do business with American companies. They feel good about doing that business. They're going to feel it's, being, it's honest, it's fair, they're being treated fairly. So that is a 
that's a very strong statement that, that can be made from my visit here so far. What memories you're carrying back home? Uh, what are the memories you're carrying back home? Well, uh, the greatest one, one of the great ones is the, the Louis Kahn uh, Parliament Building, which I have been uh, so, I've been wanting to see for so many years. I was very gratified to have a chance to visit that. So I'm ex that, was, that, that is certainly a great memory. But the other memory is that just the energy and the bustle you see in the streets, you just see in people wanting to get things done and move things forward. It's a country of huge population, 160 million people. So, I mean, how uh, efficiently Bangladesh can use its workforce. You were involved with the leadership program in Kennedy School of Government, yes. government in um, Harvard University. So how Bangladesh can develop good uh, amount of leaders for, the, for its future? Well, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, here we are in a country with 160 million people, the size of the state of Iowa, and it's half the population of the entire United States live in Bangladesh in terms of numbers. So um, I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's leadership. There's, I met a number of the ministers are young ministers. So they were bringing in young people who will bring in new ideas. Uh, we talked today, we talked on my visit about digitizing government. Very important. If we can digitize government, use an app and not have a lot of paperwork, that's how we cut red tape cut time down and make it much more efficient. And so I think that there, Bangladesh, in many ways, can leapfrog another, a number of economies by going more digital right away. Your message to the U.S. businesses in Bangladesh? My message would be that this is a good place to do business. There are a lot of opportunities here, and you don't have to go it alone. We have a great ambassador here in Bangladesh representing U.S. interests. We've got a great embassy that will support U.S. companies, and the Export Input Bank stands there to finance those exports. Thank you so much, Thank Chairman Hogba, for me. joining me on Thank Frankly you. Speaking. Thanks Thank you so much. so much. Dear viewers, that's all my conversation with Chairman Hogba, uh, Export Import Bank of the United States of America. We thank you indeed for watching this program and we invite you to watch our next episode. Until then, to take care and goodbye.